Hey everybody, welcome back. Don't let the old intro fool you. It's Throwback Thursday. We're brewing an extract beer. Brewer's Best Weizen Beer, the beer that started it all. tell you why I'm excited today. I'm not doing all grain today. I'm going with Brewer's Best Weizen beer. And why is that exciting? So this is the first beer I ever brewed uh, way back uh, in 2011. So it's been 10 years of home brewing now and this was the beer that started it all. And if you haven't seen one of my earlier videos, what kicked this whole thing off was a visit to my brother in New Glarus, Wisconsin. And we were gonna go on a brewery tour, and he said, do you wanna come in and have a beer first? And I said, sure. So we went in, and he started to pour uh, what ended up being this beer. And when I looked at it, uh, going into the, the glass, I thought, well, that's a pretty dark beer. I'm not sure that I'm gonna like this. And I said, okay, so whose beer is this? I said, well, it's my beer. And I said, I know it's your beer, but who makes it? He goes, no, I made it. Well, when I tasted it, I just thought, wow, this is one of the best beers I've ever had in my life. And, uh, you know, it's a much simpler process when you move to extract brewing. So, uh, usually if I'm out here and I'm, I'm doing my all grain brewing, we're looking at a half a day probably. You know, if I start at six, I'm done by noon with cleanup. And it's pretty much the same even if I'm doing a 10 gallon batch versus a five gallon batch. This is a lot faster. This is about, uh, you know, once you get your water boiling, it's an hour process and then chilling it down. So you're probably looking at two hours tops. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people will debate saying, oh, you know, all grain beer is, you know, it's better. And, I, and I'm not here to debate any of that. Uh, I think that a lot of the kit beers, I don't think people would be able to tell the difference between that and an all-grain beer uh, unless there's some patented flavor to it. And I mean, this has a very patented flavor to it, which is why I moved away from kit beers after a while. So I just, I didn't want to have uh, the same things over and over again. I wanted to come up with my own formulas um, that I could enjoy and, and to serve to other people. So I, I wanted to kind of make my own recipes. So that's why I moved away, uh, and for no other reason. There's nothing wrong with these beers. And um, the other thing is, back uh, 10 years ago, obviously the kits were a little bit cheaper. I got this one really pretty inexpensive through label peelers, which I've never really ordered from them before. But uh, I did go ahead and, and get this kit, and it was, I think it might have been like $30, something like that. So, I mean, not, not you know, where are you hitting uh, if you get, uh, you know, 52 beers out of it, it's very reasonable, a lot cheaper than buying commercial beer. Not as inexpensive as, uh, you know, doing your, your all grain because that's quite a bit cheaper. So, anyway, what's in the box? Everything is in the box that you're going to need except for uh, some hop bags. So, if you don't mind throwing the hops in without hop bags, go ahead. I think the first time I brewed it, I, I threw them in plain. But I have hot bags and I like using them. It cuts down on the amount of crud in the bottom of the, the boil kettle. So, what's in the box? You get your liquid malt extract, and I'll put pictures down below of what these look like close up. You also have your dry malt extract, okay? And then you'll have two ounces of SAS hops and WB06, which is the wheat yeast. So they also give you caps and bottling sugar, which is great. I have plenty of that, but you know it's nice that they include it because if someone's brewing at home, they're probably not going to have that stuff if they're doing solely kit beers. So um, one other thing I wanted to mention when you go through the instruction sheet that they also supply, they do talk about boiling, you know, adding this to two and a half gallons of water. Uh, 
10 years ago when I called them about that, I said, well, what's the deal? Why can't we just do, you know, put six gallons of water in there uh, with a boil off of a, a gallon? And uh, what, what would the, the downside be? And they said, you know, we've had a lot of discussion about that and we really don't see one. So go ahead and, and uh, brew it that way. It's going to be just as good. And it, and it is. So anyway, uh, back in a couple minutes when we get the uh, water boiling in the brew pot. All right, once you get this boil going, and you can see it's going, I may have to fire this down a little bit because I'm a little worried about a boil over right off the bat. I've got help here from me, but that's why the cage is up. Now, you'll want to remove the label. Soak it in hot water. Uh, they used to put these in plastic containers, which made it a lot easier, but this is a tin container it was a pain getting the label off and the glue, but um, it's going to be a lot better because I can just dunk the can and then get everything out. Now, I did have this in my sanitizer for no other reason than the sanitizer is hot or warm, very warm, and that uh, basically makes this a lot more liquidy. As you can see, it's kind of like molasses. So just stir it in. Now, what's going to happen is we are going to have to wait once this is stirred in to go back to a boil again and when that happens then we'll be throwing in the first set of hops. It probably won't take too long to get back to a boil. Probably take about, I don't know, four or five minutes. Probably just enough time for me to get the hops opened up and into the hop bag. But again, you always have to be careful that you don't end up with a boil over. I think I can actually dunk it this way and get everything out. Eva is doing her own investigations, which never lead to anything good. Okay, so back in a minute when we throw in the first set of Saz hops, which is one ounce. Okay, and it, it started boiling really fast, so in goes the one ounce of Saz hops, and that'll be for the complete hour. Now, 45 minutes from now, we're going to be putting in that dry malt extract, so we will be back at that step. Meanwhile, you can just sit back and relax and make sure you don't have a boil over. Okay, so there is 15 minutes left on this hour boil and now it's time to put the dry malt extract in. As you can see, I'm using a container and I'll tell you why. I've done this before with the plastic bag that they give you and it makes an incredible mess coming out of the bag all over the bag. This way at least I, I know I can get it all because I can dip the tin container in there too. But with the plastic bag it starts clumping all around the opening so it, it isn't great. This much better. You, know, you can see it's even clumping in here. You know it's clumping in the tin can so you can imagine what it's like with the bag. So anyway, I'm just trying to do the best I can with it to try and get it broken up and stirred in. Then, the next set of hops, the Saz hops, the one ounce for the 15 minute boil goes in right on top of this and I'm going to put my chiller in at the same time. Uh, ordinarily I like to have the chiller in about 20 minutes before the end of the boil. 15 minutes isn't that much of a difference. Uh, it'll be just fine. Wow, this is really clumping up. But, hey, it's better than the plastic bag. And I speak from experience. Okay, so I'm gonna get this stirred in as best I can, rinse the bucket out, get the hops in, get the chiller in. That's just about it, we're getting there. Let's see, so all that's left is all the chunky monkey stuff at the front. Let's get that off start to dip it. You can see that's a good solution to a bad problem. Just a little in there. Meanwhile, Eva's digging at her bed. Okay. This will, again, boil for 15 minutes. I think that's stirred in pretty good. I'm not seeing any... I'm seeing just a little bit of of chunks in there. 
but they should break down. They're small enough they ought to break down. Let's get the hops in. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna throw the uh, chiller in there in a minute. Probably not throw it in as violently as the hops, but I see it's going in. Okay, as you can see the chiller's in. It's plenty big for that pot now. Used to fit in there perfectly, but once I went to the larger pot, I gently expanded it, and uh, I think it'll do fine. The pool water right now is in the 30s, upper 30s, so uh, even if there's four coils under there, believe me, it's gonna chill down really fast. Okay, I'm moving, it, moving the wort down to the fermenting pail, and I did do a gravity reading, and it's 1.050, which is right on target for what Brewer's Best says that should be. So, the next step will be to aerate the wort, and then sprinkle the yeast on top, put on the airlock, and it's done. And, it took me less than two hours, so hey, I'm really happy with that. Um, and next, it won't be, probably won't be next week, but it could be late in the week, uh, that I'll be doing a 10-gallon all-grain batch of America, America and Pale Ale, so uh, you might not want to miss that one if you're interested in, in making a uh, Pale Ale that's uh, on the milder side. It's not like an IPA, not at all. Um, the hoppiness is, is a lot more subdued than that. But I'm really looking forward to trying this in about a month uh, or so. Uh, should bring back some memories. Um, so anyway, I gotta get this done and uh, aerate the wort. All right, let's oxygenate the wort. It's pretty much right at five gallons. It might be just a hair under, and I'm not really that worried about it because I'm gonna go into big bottles with this. And uh, it probably isn't gonna hurt me if I don't have some overrun of beer. There we go. Okay, next we will sprinkle the uh, WB06 yeast over the top of this. Okay, let's sprinkle the yeast in. Always sanitize the scissors you use to cut it open and the packet itself. That's it for Weisenbeer. This, on the other hand, is that first 10 gallon batch of Kolsch. Let me tell you, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this beer. It's delicious. And uh, as Tammy said, it's dangerous. It has a very, very smooth finish, uh, almost like a lager, you would think. Cheers. Just doesn't, doesn't get any better than that. I mean, my beers over the last few years have just been getting smoother and smoother. Um, anyway, back to the Weizen beer. I will come back and talk to you about this one that's ready to drink. Their description says it's a summertime classic, light body with a smooth finish, with, uh, finished with an authentic dry yeast. I don't believe that was the descri <laughs> description 10 years ago. It was a little bit longer, and uh, I don't believe it talked about being a summertime classic. Uh, in any event, everything turned out great as far as the gravity reading, so I expect it's going to be an awesome beer, and uh, we'll come back and talk about it. In the meantime, I do have that, uh, that American Pale Ale that I want to do, and that'll either be you know, late next week or the following week. In the meantime, I do want to come back. I was kind of throwing around some topics in my head, and I thought I would come back and talk about some things that happened during my brewing process where I thought it was going to make things go awry. And so I thought I'd share some of those with you next time. So until then, hope you guys have a great week. Cheers. This has been a Maddie Boy presentation. Say bye-bye, Maddie. Bye-bye.